Hello guys, welcome to Carnes Orchids, my orchid paradise here in Gothenburg, Sweden. This is going to be a care collab on the gorgeous Kitlea purpurada. Yeah, and as the care collab it is, there's going to be 15 collaborating, participating other channels for this specific species Kitlea. And I'm gonna put up a pop-up with the names so you can see for yourself who's gonna participate this time and um, I'm gonna put up links to the channels in the description box below as always. So that's how we collaborate. Visit each other's channels and see if we can get a little bit of tips and tricks and this and that. You always learn something even though you think, you may think, that your way of doing it is the very best. But, well, you may be wrong sometimes. So, here's the part of my living room area. <laughs> the fog is on. Well, I don't know why it's really near. Yeah, it's needed. No, it's not. Why is it on? I've got 76% humidity in here. Since, since we had a really, really rainy day and night for that matter, with some really high temperatures, about 30 degrees, all sweaty, this midsummer weekend. But anyway, it's good for the orchids, sweaty for me. <laughs> so, let's talk about what we're here for. The preparatus. Actually, I keep all of my huge cattleyas and, uh, yeah, a huge epidendrum, Stanford Yannum to the middle, the largest one, uh, here in my largest window. Here in the corner, I actually have some purpurata crosses. <laughs> this one, I just want to show you, why not? This one is called Kitlea Venosa. It's from Orchid Garden in Poland and it's a cross between Kitlea Roblin, uh, CG Roblin, it's, yeah, it should be, and Kitlea Labiada. And CG Roblin has got purpurata in her. So, this is a, yeah, it's a huge sized purpurata cross as well. Good growing orchid in semi high grow. A good new growth down there. Yeah, I wonder when this will bloom. I had it for several years now. And what you see here is um, tissue damage from um, having her wet and exposed to a little bit too much sunlight. So she, the leaf actually burnt. Yeah, doesn't look all that great, but this one is going to be a lovely, lovely, lovely flowered one when it's time for it. It's quite huge now, no blooming yet. But anyway, behind her, I can lift her down so you can see for yourself a little bit better. Ooh, whoop, she's heavy as well. Uh, back here, oh, why not just show show all of them to you, doesn't matter. Uh, it's a little one, I had this one since uh, all the way since it was a seedling. It's the LC Elegance. It's also a purpurata cross. Uh, primary hybrid cross it is I will put up uh, a pop-up with its uh, parents yeah the name of its parents I forgot but yeah it carries the most lovely blooms so gorgeous and it bloomed for me a couple of times now so it's really really lovely when you uh, grow a large cycle layer from a seedling and see its first blooming Lovely, lovely scent to it as well. The best scent I've ever felt on a Kitlea. On that Elsie Elegance. I'm sure I have a few more <laughs> purpurata crosses. But anyway, this is my um, newest purchase. Only one month old in my care. It's the regular, <laughs> normal variety. Lelia. Oh, I mean, uh, Kitlea purpurata. No variation to it. Not at all. Not rubra or uh, not moon or not anything it's just plain and simple Kitlea purpurata and when I got her yeah you can still see her old dead flower <laughs> it hasn't lost its color yet <laughs> strange yeah um, our local vendor she always attends to an orchid society meetings with a few a couple of plants she wants to get no not rid of but uh, she wants to sell and a few for out for delivery ordered pre-ordered uh, but anyway this one wasn't bloom but uh, 
the blooms were going over, and I asked her why. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course they can go over, but not this early. So she said the spike was broken. So they're going to last just for one more day. So I um, uploaded a video on this one. I can put a link to that video here. So you can see for yourself what she looked like when she arrived into my kitchen <laughs> that very night when I got her. The day after, the blooms were all over. So, um, But anyway, the loveliest lip with golden veinings. Uh, such a deep, deep, deep purple. Uh, the best blooms I've seen. No, no, not really, but I, I say that about every bloom I see. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, I reparted her, transitioned her immediately from her small bark uh, with some calcium uh, and salt accumulated bark, pieces of bark, small pot. She didn't, uh, she had to get, uh, yeah, she had to get out from that pot, really, immediately. So I put her into some hydro, as you can see. But I need to put a little bit more down, as you also can see, since her new growth refuses. She won't keep her roots down into the medium for very much longer. They will all crawling about over the brim of the pot, arching over. So what's the point? So I need to get her out of this medium today and pot her up a little more, bit more down into the medium, into the lecker. And yeah, uh, I forget to say... Um, the thing with this orchid is that the vendor told me that maybe her new growth, which was about this size when I got her one month ago, uh, as she lost her blooms, it might as well produce a second blooming here this summer. And I know that that can happen. I can also feel that there's something there. I cannot see anything in there, but I can feel that it's a bit thick here. Yeah, so maybe... And we got this pearl, my jewel, my precious, <laughs> no, um, it's the um, Purpurada Moon. It was named after the uh, English landscape painter, Henry George Moon, or was it George Henry Moon? I always switch names, but uh, I keep forgetting. It doesn't matter how many times I repeat it for myself to get it right, but uh, he was a famous um, orchid painter. In the early days, shall we say, and he painted the lovely Purpurada. So this one, got his, yeah, it was named after him. So this one has the variation called Moon. And I'm really proud of this one. I had this one since October 2016. And it's been sitting in Semihydro uh, the last, last year, I think. It took a few years before she reached maturity, even though I got her as a really, really well-grown plant, but uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't enough, so she needed a few more years on her neck to uh, to reach the maturity size, actually. So, she had to reach this size, king, in order to be able to bloom. Yes, but now you wonder, this cane has also bloomed. Yeah, just like, as for this year, yeah, she created a small, tiny, little scared uh, cane, even this year. And it bloomed in August, late August, and that's surprising. She usually blooms in uh, early April to early May, yeah, somewhere around that time. So she lost her schedule and blooms from every new cane. She won't skip this blooming either. We will see some purple rada moon blooms in August or perhaps July this time, you may never know. I usually keep these guys outside during summertime on my balcony, but the nighttime temperature has been so very low lately, uh, around 10 degrees Celsius each night. So, um, yeah, I didn't dare to bring them out. And the sunlight, the sun rays, well, hit these new fragile, uh, not matured leaves, and uh, mark them for life, yeah. So I didn't want it yet, but uh, in one or two weeks perhaps I will bring them outside. But they still need the light in order to develop these new guys properly. So it's better to wait and put them outside a little bit later on, I think. Um, the species is, uh, yes, yeah, you all guessed, I believe, an epiphyte from Brazil. But lately, she's been wandering down <laughs> south uh, to the western part of yeah South America as well. 
grows on old trees. Yeah. Yeah, but she can also grow in lacquer beads. Yeah, she really can. Yeah, I was hesitating a little bit since she's suspicious and this one didn't carry any scale. So it's a scale infestation was the re real reason why I put most part of my cattleyas into semi-hydro. But yeah, it's proved to be kind of efficient. Look here. And this cattleya creating a couple of new growth this year. And this one as well. It's not bad, it's working. You only have to be persistent and don't change your setup just because it doesn't work out immediately the way you wanted it to be. Yeah. But on the ones which has been sitting in semi-hydro for at least one year, not producing any roots, I will have to consider another setup, but uh, that will be in a later video. All right, follow me into my kitchen. Um, according to my little nose, she usually blooms about 19 days. <laughs> 19 days each time, yeah? Without exceptions. Yeah. And she's also brilliantly scented. Lovely scent to this orchid. Yeah. Uh, and she can grow as tall as 100 centimeters. So, this one is about halfway up my latest acquisition. This one is. I haven't seen this one so much, so uh, I figured that we would take a closer look on only this one for today, since I know that there are going to be a few more updates on the purple rods in the future. Yes! So, Unfortunately, I will need to get her out. As you can see, no water to the bottom here. Why is that so? Well, it's because I don't want to give a newly transitioned orchid a uh, huge, deep water reservoir for starters. Yeah, of course, the roots will eventually die off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be replaced with some new ones, which will adapt into the lacquer beads setup. But, uh, but if it doesn't happen, in a rapid pace. Yay! What can happen instead? Well, it won't go downhill as fast as it could do, so um, it's much better to only flush it the first couple of weeks. Yeah, but anyway, I know that there will be a couple of dead roots down here already. So, I'll I'll make a proper clean up on her and now I can release the roots down here and free some space since I placed her a little bit higher up with a rather thick layer of lacquer beads to the bottom in order not for her to meet with the water reservoir all that much to start with. That's the point. Yeah, <laughs> there was a little bit of thought to it but now I have to clean her up a bit. So, and do it properly, one month later. So, maybe you won't have to look at this, but uh, as you can see, dead roots down here. So, I would just clean up as much as possible. I found a few pieces of uh, old bark, which I couldn't get rid of, peel off the last time. It was so tightly stuck to the roots inside the bowl. Yeah, so now they're gone. And I have a mixture of, as usual, like beads. With charcoal. I wasn't so generous with the charcoal last time, so I need to uh, cut a bit more into this little mixture. As always, for its disinfected properties, I've always been using charcoal in my mixtures, no matter what I uh, put up, <laughs> what kind of uh, houseplant or orchid or whatever. Here's what's left of its root system. Not so bad, really. Um, yeah. As you can see here, it's already a bump, a little eye, to her newest growth, which is really growing fast as the speed of night. Yes, and her second growth here. Yeah, yeah as you saw perhaps in the unboxing, shall we say, video when I showed her the first time, uh, this one is a, an old division, really. Uh, it's not so bad. But anyway, Let's pot her up again in the same um, in the same pot, <laughs> same size. A little bit of this to the bottom, a little bit less than last time. <laughs> so let's prepare some space. Yeah, here and there. So there's not going to be anything created.
from this one. Never, ever again. Perhaps he has a little eye, but that won't happen. Look at the uh, thrived up one. This hasn't got enough energy to pr produce anything. So, yeah, it's going to be here. And I need her to go down a bit more. Otherwise, this uh, cleaning up with parting will be in vain without any purpose to it. I mean, what's the point? If it's not going to be a better result. So, now, now, she's down a bit more into this part. So the roots will search their way down into the lecker and not outside. But there's still a decent layer of lecker beads to the bottom. So she won't uh, get a huge uh, water reservoir now. Not yet. But there will be in a month or so. I will still only flush her a little bit. Since her old roots aren't capable of taking up all that much water, they aren't that great anymore, and her new ones are a little bit too fresh in order to take up the water as well. So uh, we're left with a kind of poor situation here. So moment 22, as we say <laughs> in Sweden, we have a lot of expressions in my country. As yeah, I'm sharing them with you every day. Well, I like it. <laughs> I like um, metaphors and expressions and scenes. Yeah, just fun. So, let's not cover the new growth all that much. And, uh, yeah, this will be great. And, as I clean, clean the letter off, the grey wool land it to the bottom. And the grey will make sure that the uh, that the water, or shall we say the moisture, stays a little bit longer inside the pot. And the so it keeps the surface a little bit more uh, damp in a way. Yes, strange, but uh, yeah, it really happens. So let's stake her up now. I can always redo this staking a bit later on. Um, just that I need her to establish her new roots down there. Real good now. Now we saw a cleanup reporting on the uh, Lelia. No, I mean Kitlea Purpurada. And maybe if she gets into bloom, I will of course show you the lovely bloom when that happens. Which I think it will, since she lost her blooms. Yes. Either. She will rebloom or she will create a new growth faster and earlier than she normally would have done if she lost her blooms. The spike has cracked or was broken or something like that in order to reproduce. That's the main thing, isn't it? So, thank you guys very much for watching this little video. Uh, I will put links to my previous two, I think there were two previous Care Collab videos on my Leila Purpurada movie. Yeah. So, take care and thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.